Alrighty. Oh, I have three viewers. Yay! Okay. <laughs> yes, we can start actually playing the game. Ooh. Do you bite your thumb at me? I did not bite anybody's thumb at you. I didn't. I didn't. I did not. <laughs> Got an R and J. Huh? I'm confused. What do you mean R and J discussion? Oh no. Guys, look, it's not good. Oh no. Oh, okay. All of a sudden I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> guys, guys, it's not good. Guys, we're in trouble. No, 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 how dare you. Hope you all enjoy this beautiful art from this beautiful game. Please let me know if the uh, uh, sound is good. I'm going to crack open a beer in just a second. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, thanks, Suze. So everyone, this is a this is a puzzle game. With tiny little creatures. Yeah, I've made you a mod. I did. Hi, dear. Oh, goodness. Uh, which way do we go, everybody? Let's go this way. So, this is... The Tanicula, the little tiny puzzle game. And it has gorgeous art. It is very much my style. And I was going to talk about on tonight's stream. Ooh. Plant communication as well as the plant immune system because I had asked everyone to uh, uh, suggest things they wanted me to talk about but um, <laughs> the votes were tied <laughs> and so we get to talk about them both I guess Balanced as all things should be. I guess that's true. <sighs> I feel like there's something else I'm supposed to... So, one of the lovely things about this game is it explains nothing. It <laughs> you just You just do stuff. And just click around and find out what happens. Okay, that one's new. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Woo! Goodness. Oh. You just sort of mess around and see what happens. Let me know if the sound is okay, but, um, yeah, so right now we're looking for feathers. <laughs> There's a few things that are aerodynamically impossible <laughs> in, this, in this game. We definitely, definitely shouldn't go into, uh, 
Whoa, biological accuracy on this particular game. Let's just let's just say that. Um, let's release some spores, everybody. Um, but it is beautiful. <sighs> no, I'm just laughing because uh, Pasta like retweeted all of my stuff. Um, and it's like, oh, for the stream. And then he started streaming, like, literally five minutes before I did. I'm like, good job, babe. So, I sent him a message. He'll probably figure out. I should have more wine about it. That's true. Okay, what am I missing here? Oh, no. Okay, so there's always something to find on each one of these. But I don't know where. Shoot, what should I try? You don't leave? Fine, I'll try a different one. Oh no, I'm not doing good, guys. All right. Okay. But yeah, of the friends that are here, does anyone have any guesses as to... Ooh! Hello, little spider. Does anyone have any guesses as to the... Ooh! Come here. Come here. As to the different ways plants communicate. Now come back, bud. Because I will say it's a relatively new field. Some of the very first papers that were discussing it were only happened in 2006. And some of the more recent ones happened as early, as late as lately as 2017. Yes, there is one thing about smell. So mostly, plants communicate via volatile organic compounds. So VOCs. Yes. So the cut grass smell is the oh hell shit's bad son. That is an herbivory response mechanism. So basically, your lawnmower, the world's most advanced herbivore, oh no, I didn't want to do that. One of the world's most efficient herbivores um, causes the plant to go through an herbivory response. So part of that is involved in communication as well as a defense mechanism. So a lot of the plant communication and immune system things I was talking about are pretty interconnected. Um, so volatile organic compounds, volatile means that they are in the air. So as they say, things you can see, small compounds, easily dissolve, easily float through the air. Okay, I think I've done everything on this screen. Oh no, we're doing so bad. And those compounds are involved in communication to other parts of the plant. So if, say, one part of it gets hurt, then the other, ooh. One part um, of the plant gets hurt, then the rest of the tissues will um, sense these volatile compounds. Mm. And <laughs> and we'll use that as a way to communicate with the rest of the plant that stuff is bad. <laughs> but what also occurs is that other plants have learned to eavesdrop, basically. So say in your lawn of cut grass... The yard next to yours 
can detect those volatile organic compounds and can start preparing for the inevitable, <laughs> the, their inevitable demise. Um, and so it is not a conscious thing. So it's fun to think about that maybe, you know, plants would warn each other, um, but that's not exactly the case. It's more of ones which will, ones which were able to eavesdrop on other ones um, had a selective advantage. <laughs> Whoa, no! <laughs> How did scientists figure it out? That's an excellent question. So, it had to do with performing different variety of stresses on plants, but mostly finding out the first clues was that if you put, for example, a ripe banana in with other fruits, that those fruits would ripen. And so they that led to the theory that, okay, there's a proximity thing here. The ripening, the ripe banana must be releasing something. And they figured out you could also get this to happen even if they didn't touch. So if you put a ripe banana in with other unripe fruit, like through a mesh, right, like cheesecloth or something like that, you would also get this ripening effect. So they, f and they used finer and finer mesh to figure out that it was event that it's actually a gas, a gas called ethylene, which acts as a hormone. Um, or the sort of ripening hormone or signaling molecule. And so then with that first sort of um, evidence of ethylene, then it's the, okay, well, then that must mean that there's got to be, maybe there are other compounds that do things. They also noticed that you could have, if you had a plant, like say in a forest, for example, um, you would get instances where one plant is sick, but then for some reason the rest of the rest of the plants nearby it, or even at the other end of the woods, um, showed resistance to the disease even before getting inoculated with them. Yes, it did come from put tomatoes in a bag to ripen them. <laughs> yes, it did come from that. People have known this forever, but didn't even necessarily know why. But yes, you are correct. That is where that wisdom came from. And so then it came, so then the idea is, are there other compounds that do these things and are involved in this? Okay, I'm definitely missing something here. Yes. Ethan is correct. Much of modern science is informed by folklore, for sure. Oh no. Hmm. So, plants can communicate in a variety of ways. As I said, they're through these volatile organic compounds, which dissolve either through the air or dissolve um, through, like, the soil, through water and stuff. They can be localized, where you're, you have basically, as I said, wounding response where a part of the plant is wounded and it's responding to the herbivores and so on and so forth. Um, you can also get different hormones coming from different parts of the plant. You have other plants eavesdropping on each other, but also plants besides sort of talking to each other, even if it's in a more passive way, is plants talking to animals. So, plants make a variety of these volatile compounds. So, your perfumes, for example, 
<sighs> I know I'm missing something here. To attract pollinators. Or, you know, other different insects. Then you also have... Um, ones which are tra try to attract uh, different types of seed dispersers. So that can be done with floral scent. That can be done with color. They also will communicate to each other through their fungal networks. So most plants... Shoot, I cannot remember this puzzle. What am I missing? What am I missing, everybody? I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Is it most plants will go th have a variety of strategies to attract seed dispersers, but also a variety of strategies to attract, to attract pollinators. So that is also, as we said before, a sort of form of communication. And they will also interact with one another through the fungal networks that connect all of their different root systems. And so... Most plants, they cannot get nitrogen on their own. They have to form symbiotic relationships with either soil bacteria or soil fungi. And most it's fungi, especially in the forests. And so these mycorrhizal fungi, so myco is fungus, rhizo is root. So there will be these mycorrhizal networks, which will span. Hey, air. <laughs> yes, plant, we are joy, plants and fungi. Like, it is not, it is not just something that Jerry Holkins made up. It's a legitimate thing. <laughs> uh, so, for example, oh, I cannot figure this puzzle out. No! Um, shoot. So, for example, you can, there are plants which can get signals from across the forest from each other because those compounds are traveling through the fungal network that is underneath the, in the soil. And so it is literally like basically the internet because <laughs> it moves faster than it would by simple diffusion through other roots. I cannot believe I can't figure this out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You guys wouldn't know I played this game before. Of course it was years ago. So yes, the, the literal, um, the, the plants and fungus we are joy is a literal thing. <laughs> um, so there's also, uh, for example, as I said, plants talk to animals, so... Since air's here, <laughs> there are also, for example, Venus flytraps um, make a variety of different perfumes and compounds to uh, attract prey. <laughs> and so that is also a form of communication. Okay. <laughs> I should tweet it, Jerry. Them, them, them smiling. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I already, I already creeped the poor guy out enough when he was complaining. Oh no, we still need one more, guys. Gosh, dang. Still haven't figured it out. Oh. I could treat, tweet him about We Are Joy. I have mentioned that before, sometimes during uh, acquisitions intoxicated. Um, I already creeped them out bad enough when they were talking about liking mushrooms but not liking insects, and then I had to tell them, uh, I had to tell Eric and Jerry that 
um, the cell walls of fungus and the cell walls of insects are made by the exact same thing, are the exact same compound. <laughs> that they're both made of chitin. Oh, oh not, oh, my state plants. Oh, okay, not, 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 not Carolina State, Florida. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew what you meant. It's fine. Oh, gosh. I do not want to have to look this up. I do not want to have to look this up. This is embarrassing. I'm missing something, guys. I'm missing something. I am missing something in this puzzle. That I can't figure out what it is. Oh, shoot. What is it, though? What am I missing? <laughs> but yes, most almost everything that plants communicate is via what we consider smell. Although most of it we don't, um, we can't perceive with our mammalian noses. Although there's certain ones we can for sure. We. Is there anything in there? <laughs> Even the guide can't help you now. <laughs> oh gosh. Let's try some different. Nope, nothing in there. Okay. Hey! Well, that's something different. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, seriously? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, sorry, everyone. Ugh. I'm a professional. <laughs> Yay! We win! Also, I don't know what this creature is, but it shouldn't be able to fly. Just like bumblebees. Bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly, but they can. Yeah, bye-bye, big glob thing. Hey, everyone, we are Joy. Look. Ah! <laughs> It literally is. Woohoo! <laughs> Everybody ready for our drug trip? Whoosh. Hey, oh. See, even the game is taking over. Look at this sassy thing. I'm not doing anything. Wow. Literal we are joy moment. Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Welcome to D&D, &D, everybody. You can do anything. Are acid trips impressive in D&D? &D? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anybody else have any idea, um, any other questions about um, plant communication? Do you want to know another interesting, fun one? Ooh. Well, that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> in 2017, it was shown that uh, plants can also do signals through electrical impulses. So, that's right. Electricity in plants. Calcium channels, just like the way our nerves work. And that because of that, they think that it is a way those different, I guess we'll say, calcium cascades and ions also will allow for a type of memory. So plants don't have a brain. Plants don't have nerves or anything. However, they do have a way of sort of short-term memory. 
Oh, I heard sometimes plants let off smells that attract critters, but it's defense against other critters. This is correct. So there are... Or is it the lawnmower deal? A little bit of both. So there are insects which have... Who also eavesdrop, basically, on these compounds. And that will um, result... <laughs> Ooh... That will result in them going, oh, there's something chewing on that thing. So, for example, wasps, which are attracted to caterpillars. Or you get your um, tomato, like, worms and stuff like that. Um, which will then get killed by a type of parasitic wasp. So, in that case, they are eavesdropping on the wounding compounds that the plant's releasing and going, oh, look, there's something that's chewing on that and that's potential prey. But then there are also plants which will make compounds that attract other, um, other insects to get rid of the bad insects, basically. <laughs> yes, you know, wasps are pretty terrible, but there are wasps which do associate with plants for that very reason. Um, but they are, there's a variety of chemistry and stuff, um, fascinating sort of chemistry that goes on with that. And a lot of it we don't really understand, <laughs> as, as, as with most things. <laughs> they are not bee bros. They are no. They are not. They are not. Although, I know it's easy to not care for wasps, however, they do provide a lot of good services when it comes to pollination and other types of things as well as ooh a key as well as helping maintain um different other insect populations <laughs> lies no <laughs> lies well you're not going to be happy when i tell you that for example mosquitoes there are tons and tons of mosquito species, and most of them are harmless. They don't bite humans. They, um, they pollinate plants and feed off of nectar. So, <laughs> so whatever is like, screw mosquitoes, it's like, actually would probably be a bad thing, not a good thing. Um, because plenty of them are harmless and don't do anything to humans at all, or very tiny. Well, they just give you this key. That's kind of nice. Ooh, nice. Everybody, we're taking a ride. Can anybody hear this adorable music, or is it just me? <laughs> Oh no! Guys, we're in trouble. Now what do we do? Hmm... Nope. Gosh dang it. Back to the puzzles. <laughs> oh, shoot. Ah, which combination have I not tried? Yes! <laughs> Excellent. So thank you, B, for bringing us back here. Oh, they're singing. <laughs> You're not near old enough to be my uncle. Big brother, maybe.
but don't even. <sighs> so what's everybody else drinking? I have a gin and tonic style ale from a local place called Insight Brewing. Insight Brewing. And it's called My Crazy Aunt. I'm a big fan. Yeah, all I've got to do is convince uh, Jerry and Eric Benson there, there definitely won't ever be a PAX North. However, I might, just might, convince them to do a brewing event. Especially since all of their homebrew stuff that they get um, for Ack Intox is from... Um, it's Northern Brewer, right, babe? Pretty sure. Yes. They get all of their stuff from Northern Brewer, which is in town, where I live. And we actually started home brewing and getting stuff from them as well. So, we'll be like, come on, dudes. Favorite store. It's in Minnesota, so that means everyone either home brews and there's tons of beers. It's going to be a good time. Mm, Dark Horse Big Red Blend. Mm, that sounds good. What's it like? Gosh, I went backwards again. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the puzzle game, everybody. I'm starting to get the end, and I don't remember what to do next. It's red wine shrug. <laughs> I like that. It's like a question mark. Oh, it's dry. Okay. It's wine? Maybe? It's like, shouldn't you know? <laughs> shouldn't you know? All right, snaky thingy. How does this work? How do I do this? Okay. Okay. Now I got it. Now I figured it. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> when it dry enough, I need water after my wine. Okay, that'll make sense to me. Yeah, too bad. Too bad on you. Okay, guys, I've got all the keys. Hooray. Water of the wine in Roman tradition. That's true. That's true. Now I feel like I need to start making some, like, Irish priest jokes. Because <laughs> I am a bad person. Now we've got to remember where our uh, little, little acorn puzzle guy was. Oh. Gosh, what were we going to talk about before? We were going to talk about the planned immune system, weren't we? I thought we were. And I forgot because I'm dumb. Nope. Shoot. Gotten all turned around, guys. So, a lot of those... Volatile aromatic compounds, VOCs, are also involved in our plant immune system. So, plant does not have the same kind of immune system we do. I know, big shocker there to everybody. Um, most of the time they call it plant defense compounds instead of uh, immune system because immunity you know sort of implies that there are like antibodies and immune cells involved and that is not the case um instead there are two different levels Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
One is called Pattern Triggered Immunity. Okay, <laughs> wait guys, we need, <laughs> you need to see this. Yes, a genie, a genie in an acorn. A genie in an acorn. Oh, well that's exciting. Cool. <laughs> I'm a genie and an acorn gotta plant me the right way. That's true. Everybody enjoying your concert? now I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, there we go. Get the vocals in there. Yeah. Now it's a party. Immune response start with pattern triggered immunity, which is where each and every plant cell can detect different molecular patterns. That's right, everybody. This is really a drug trip. So there's different molecular patterns that they will detect either from fungus or from bacteria. And then we'll go through, basically, if anyone watches Star Trek, I'm sure there's no nerds in this chat. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Basically, pattern-triggered immunity is basically what I would call yellow alert. <laughs> the plant starts to prepare defensive compounds just in case something bad's going to happen. Also, yes. Watch this. The moon is a mouth and you are dead. <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> I'm the one that's not a Star Trek buff, so yes. So that is, um, so pattern triggered immunity is what I consider yellow alert. Basically caution, right? Or like, we'll say like a tornado watch. <laughs> yes, danger. Could be bad. But we only go through full on defense mode. Let's roll this up. <laughs> yes, red alert. The red alert is. <laughs> boy, that's right. And so, when there is a red alert, um, is called effector triggered immunity, and that's basically when a plant within the cell detects a foreign molecule from a pathogen and is like, ah, crap. And then they go through full-on defense cascades. So usually in our cells, 
what will happen is a cell gets sick and it puts little tiny protein markers on the outside of itself to say I'm sick and a white blood cell will come by and be like okay um, you need to go and we'll eat it take it to the lymphocytes in your immune system and then we'll say hey we found this thing of this sick plant eat bad what do we do? Yes, everyone, the genie gave us a teacup to trap the bad guy. <laughs> ah. So, as I said, the white blood cell will eat the sick cell. It will take it to the lymphocytes and be like, hey, we saw this thing. And it no work no more. Have we ever seen anything like this before? Oh my gosh. Hey, boy. Am I playing as a nematode? I'm not playing as a nematode. I'm playing as these little guys. They are many things. Shoot, then I lost my train of thought. And so then lymphocytes will start to make antibodies, either looking for things that they already have, and other types of pathogens that the plant has, that the body, sorry, these are humans, have seen before, and then we'll make antibodies, and those antibodies will bind to those markers and then be like, hey, there's an infection, and then we start dealing with that. Well, plants do not have that type of Ooh, that type of immune response. Nematode. Is it not nematode? Nematode, nematode. Actually, it could be both. Both are correct. I've heard both. It's a nematode. I've actually heard both. And it actually depend, and it depended on who I was talking to. <laughs> it, it it definitely depended on um, or nematode. Yep, it depended on what the country of origin of the person I was talking to was, um, because there was a gentleman that I met, um, wonderful gentleman, uh, who's been studying nematode diseases, nematode caused diseases for his entire career um, from uh, Zimbabwe. And he said nematode. Um, but then I've heard nematode from other people too. So it's not looking good fam. Okay, okay, no, I know, I know, I know, I need to find the thing. Not unless I give you the thing? I have the thing? I have the thing? I gave this to you? Yes? Is that what you wanted? Oh, okay. Okay, everyone, that was weird. <laughs> But yes, this entire, this is, this is a cute, but also um, very trippy game. <laughs> so, what I was describing before in our bodies is called adaptive immunity, which is basically, we see a pathogen, we can remember that pathogen, we have resistance to that pathogen later in our lives. Plants do not have this. Instead, they basically have, um, woohoo, have what I call the nuclear option. <laughs> so if there's an infected cell, what 
the okay I'm confused what the plant will do is that um, that cell will commit suicide and not only will it commit suicide but it will <laughs> is it will kill all the cells around it so if you see a um, so if you see a leaf which has a black sort of spot on it that is a lesion and that is basically where um, an infection occurred and those cells those infected cells killed themselves and all the cells around them so that the infection couldn't spread I have no idea what's happening right now, guys. <laughs> but apparently there's a drunk bug. At least that's what I'm learning. I'm so confused. <laughs> and that actually occurs by making what are called reactive oxygen species. Who are you calling a drunk bug? That's right. Don't judge me. So those, um, basically the nuclear, um, <laughs> option. It's close to bedtime. No worries. Go. Go enjoy bed. <laughs> Aww. Love you too. Thank you for coming. And hanging out. I think everybody's kind of tired today. I even did a bunch of reading to try to prep for this stream, but <laughs> not getting too many questions, so I'm like, okay, we'll just chill out. <sighs> what am I missing here? I'm missing something. Good night. Good night, good night. Whoa, caps. <laughs> Mycorrhizal. Does anyone know what that means? Come here, come here, come here. Nice. I'm seeing if anyone know is anyone's going to volunteer. It's okay if you don't. <laughs> I will help you, buddy. Apparently, this acorn has Jedi powers. Actually, I went Myco, so it's M Y C O. Myco. Mycorrhizal. So that guy should be dead. Let's be real. Nice. Hooray! So M Y C O, Myco. Do do do. It's also the same as if you know what mycology means. Yes, part of it. Myco specifically um, means fungus. No, I'm not. I'm not judging anybody. Yes, it's like myconids, right? Myconids, myco means fungus. So yes, myconids, you know, fungus people. It's actually accurate. Also, I don't know why in this game that there are tree fish, but there are. The dude just lassoed a tree fish. All right. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. Yes, so Myco 
is fungus. Rhizo is root. So a mycorrhizal network would be a <laughs> a fungal root network. And this game is a drug trip and I've come to terms with it. Yes, but isn't it cute? Woo! Fungus Root Network. Yep. I played bass for Fungal Root Network. It is very cute. It's very pretty. Also. No! Why won't it let us go? Aye! Huh. 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 Guys, I'm running out of options. Everything... Also, everything is trying to eat them. Being an insect must be horrifying. This is true. Well, also being a plant must be horrifying. Okay. I know that we're still looking for two more siblings. Nope. Not a problem, Nit. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, trees talk to each other through their roots using the mycorrhizal network. They found that this is discovered because it would move a lot faster. Those signals can pass from one, one end of the forest to the other much faster than they would through simple diffusion. And especially because you could have trees that are not connected at all via their roots still getting signals from other trees, which gave them the idea that, oh, okay, well then... Okay, now I've got a thing. I don't know why I need it. Bye, Nick. Good night. Thank you. So. All right, I think we got a weapon, guys. No, that didn't work. Why did that not work? Shoot. Hmm. Also, this is the little lizard guy that bit me. Oh, I already did this part. Nope. Not a problem. Not a problem. I think we've got... I think we've covered most everything we've talked about. Um, volatile organic compounds. We've talked about... <laughs> Yes. It is very adorable. It is also very trippy. It is just a puzzle game. Oh no. That didn't work. Why do they sound like sheep? <laughs> Why do they sound like sheep? I don't understand. It's small folk sheep, everybody. We've talked about volatile organic compounds, the ways plants communicate through the fungal mycorrhizal network, as well as through electricity, through calcium induction signaling, which is the way that they can remember things, at least short-term memory. Like, for example, a Venus flytrap can remember how soon it's been triggered, closed versus not. And it does that through calcium signaling. And there is some evidence now that within the plant's phloem, a different electrical signals that go through it can cause a type of short and long-term memory so that a plant can remember and prepare for 
previous stressful years versus non-stressful years, drought versus flood versus so on and so forth. Which is a lot more than anyone ever really thought. They used to call the field plant neurobiology, if I remember correctly. But since plants don't have nerves, everyone, a lot of uh, people who studied animals didn't, didn't like them using the term. And so now they've changed it to plant signaling and behavior. Which there are some people that still don't like that term either because they're like, okay, well, you know... Does the plant really have agency or does it really behave in a certain way? Which I'm just like, well, all sorts of, you know, uh, organisms behave in certain ways. So there's a lot of arguments. It they go, they go, go back and forth. Back to our drunk bug. No, drunk bug. Ah! Come back, bud. No! I know I'm missing something here, but what am I missing? Gosh dang it. Oh! No! But yeah, let's see. Follow organic compounds, electrical signaling, mycorrhizal fungi. Now, I don't think we've talked about touch response, although that doesn't really fall into this category. Um, a lot of it has to do with hormones. Ooh. Oh, did I do it? Did I do it? Did I finally do it? Okay, then. I don't even know what I did. This bug needs to get some greasy food into them. I guess that's true. Mm. Work, darn you. What am I missing? Shoot. No. Hmm. And then for, let's see, plant defense compounds, we have various hormones. We have R genes, R proteins which are different proteins that have evolved to um, bind different types of pathogenic molecules. So they're called R genes or resistance proteins. Um, oh, pattern triggered immunity, effect triggered immunity. I'm not going to go into all the hormones unless someone wants me to. Because a lot of this is exceedingly nerdy. And probably something that no one's going to remember besides myself. Go on. Oh no. Okay. So. One of the major defense hormones that a plant exudes when it's being attacked is called salicylic acid. Now, if any of you like to pay attention to medicine, salicylic acid not only is a defense compound used to signal for bacterial infection, it is also what aspirin is made from. So, willow, all plants have salicylic acid. Yep. All plants have salicylic acid, but at different concentrations. Salicylic acid. There's a lot of it in willow bark. It's one of the reasons that that was a um, type of treatment 
for a long, long time was is that willow bark, willow bark tea, chewing on willow bark. However, yes, no. Salicylic acid is a defensive compound, spell, and acetyl salicylic acid acts as a signaling molecule. However, you do not want to eat a bunch of willow bark along your... <laughs> If you don't know what you're doing, because it will cause major bruising <laughs> and will probably hurt you pretty badly. Oh no. Yes. Don't do it. Um, you can take a little bit, but most people, have a, it, it could cause some bad effects or whatever. Acetyl salicylic acid is a precursor to aspirin when it was first developed. And it is safer for people to have in that format. Although, if you want to learn about aspirin and it's very, 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 very fascinating, fascinating history, listen, go ahead and listen to the aspirin episode done by doctors um, Aaron, Alm, um, Aaron Allman Updike and Dr. Aaron Welsh, which they run an ep they run a podcast called um, "This Podcast Will Kill You." <laughs> they are um, absolutely hilarious, amazingly funny women, um, and they have a cocktail recipe during each of their podcasts, which they call a quarantini, or you can also have a, um, <laughs> you can also have a virgin, uh, uh, type called a placeborita. <laughs> um, but they are incredibly funny, incredibly knowledgeable, super smart. So Dr. Erin Welsh has finished up her postdoc or is working on a couple posts is working on postdoc she is an epidemiologist as well as a historian um and then dr erin on updike finished her phd in epidemiology is finishing up her medical degree and just had a baby <laughs> So it's just, I just, everyone thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> nothing, nothing on this woman. And helps run a podcast with her best friend that they put out every week. So yeah. Did a bunch of field work in Panama. So, but yeah, I absolutely adore their podcast. I have not been able to catch up with them recently, but it is incredibly um, fascinating. All about medicines, but specifically pathogens. Um, and they did a great one on aspirin as well as how it's derived, where it comes from, the history behind it especially the very interesting sort of patent history. <laughs> so, yeah. I highly recommend it. Gosh, Gosh dang. Uh, yeah, so salicylic acid, bacterial defense compound, also was used to make aspirin. A lot of the plant defense compounds are used to make medicine. And when people get weird about different chemical stuff or whatever, you know, most of the plant defense compounds are anti-insect compounds, or antimicrobial compounds, or antifungal compounds, which is one of the reasons that we use them for medicine. Why? Because plants are nature's chemists. If you want to know more about plant chemistry and plant defense compounds specifically, Please go follow Lucas Banta at Plants Are Chemists. Plants, capital R, as in the letter, chemists, on Twitter. Every Friday, he posts what's called Phytochemical Friday. 
and I try to retweet them as often as possible because then you can learn all about the different compounds. Hippocrates discovered in ancient Greece that having people with 2 the H chewing on the root which produces salicylic acid. That is correct. You are correct. Yeah, I do remember making aspirin. That was fun. Well, and also, yep, thank you, Ethan. Plants are chemists. Yeah, plants are chemists. Lucas is amazing and a lot of fun. And I wish that... Um, he actually sent me... I was supposed to help him with a civilian science project to get um, different compounds, which... I didn't do because we moved <laughs> last summer and I think I still have the pack in my writing desk because I'm a bad person. But yes, if you, if anyone ever wants to help with science, there are a lot of wonderful, if you just look up civilian scientist projects, um, there are biologists all over the place who would love, 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 love any help that you could give at all. Um, and there's all sorts of interesting things you can do. Also because Dar insisted that I talk about more plant hormones, we're going to talk about co-op a game on one of your streams probably maybe I don't know <laughs> I feel like I should be able to do that like we should okay Her <sighs> woof woof Okay. Bubble, where are you going? There we go. Huzzah. I did the thing. Maybe. Oop. But, yeah, I feel like we should be able to figure that out. And by we, I mean Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh dang I want to hear that banter oh there's definitely yeah you are right. correct there's going to be banter it's bad enough I have banter right now now you've made me have to talk about jasmonic acid jasmonic acid which is another hormone that has to do that has involved with dealing with fungal defense responses and ethylene, which has to do with fungal defense responses, but is also the ripening hormone, as well as the senescence hormone. Senescence means you're dying. So when, like, leaves turn yellow or whatever, it's, you know, dying. Also, I don't like that, like, sucking sound. I just, I just don't. Okay. Hehehehe. <laughs> Well, we just brought him and then he died at his death. He gave us the option as a viewer. I took my opportunity. That's true. So, yes. Jasmonic acid. Then we have ethylene. Then we have gibberellic acid. Gibberellin acid. Gibberellic acid. Um, we have cytokinins, which are a type of growth hormone as well as regulatory hormone. We have auxin, which is a growth hormone. Major growth hormone. Mm. Ugh. What else am I forgetting? We have abscisic acid, which has to do with dealing with... Um, so we have different types of stress that happen in everywhere. <laughs> uh, 
uh, in humans as well as plants, and that is, for example, we have uh, biotic stress, right? So that means bio some other sort of life form. So, oh my gosh, story time, guys. Ah! No, the bad guy is stealing the forest. Oh no. Yee! Yee! It's not good, guys. It's not good. No, it's not good. I don't like it. It's not good. Oh, shoot. So they have biotic stresses, which have to do with other pathogens or, you know, other life form. Then there's abiotic stress, which means not biology. So, for example, you've got your, like, too much sun, not enough sun, drought, too much water, not enough water, salt. Those sorts of things. All right, what do we do next? We still haven't found this third kid. <laughs> Where is this third kid? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, I can't end the stream before I find this kid. All right. Up here. Go here. Now. <laughs> Ta-da! Hooray! I know I'm forgetting some hormones, but those are the big major ones. You think I would know this from, you know, the, uh, the amount of suffering I went through to write my dissertation. <laughs> Too bad I, I, I blocked it from my mind. <laughs> Hooray! Can't remember what I'm remembering. What all this? What, what all things? That's okay. I don't have to remember. I wrote a book. <laughs> mm. Vivid nightmares, that's true. Apparently we've got to find a tree duck, everybody. Don't worry, I'm, I'm having to revisit it because I'm trying to turn one of the chapters of my dissertation into a manuscript right now. It is so fun. Can't you hear the amount of fun I'm having in my voice? What, we need 14 of these tree ducks? <laughs> Darn. All right, well, I'm going to save. Oh my goodness, I did not save at all this so far. Woof. Good thing we didn't die. Good thing it's not, uh, it's kind of impossible to die in this game. Well, gosh, I think we covered everything, or at least everything I wanted to cover. Otherwise, we're going to get into some really, 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 really complicated and in-depth chemistry. Because I don't think anyone wants to hear about mitogen-activated protein kinase pathways and cascades. And Dar, if you say so, you probably don't believe you. Uh. <laughs> Not unless everyone wants to hear about map kinase cascades. Was that English? <laughs> Mitogen activated protein kinase cascades. Nope, that was not the Krebs cycle. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, sorry if you guys had a fun time. As I said, this is an adorable little game. Um, and I will see you again in a couple weeks. Um, I'll put a poll up in Twitter asking about what we should talk about next. Or you can give me suggestions. Just tweet at me. At, at Drunk Fido. Thanks, everybody.